our pot garden is back. Not that kind of pot. Hi guys, it's Amanda and Bill and Hi. we are here for another garden tour because as you can see, our pot garden is back. Not that kind of pot. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we're going to show you what we planted. So that's zucchini, and I got those as itty bitty seedlings, and now they're slightly less itty bitty seedlings. That's a sweet million, which is a kind of cherry tomato. This is an early girl, which is a larger tomato, but supposed to go, supposed to produce tomatoes sooner than some. And this is a, sometimes the kids pull the little tags. Little Sophie, she has a bad habit. <laughs> we had a little crisis, so we have the little one to join us here. We have the little culprit of the tag removal. That's right. So that is pickling cucumbers. Which we will pickle. This is a old German. It's an heirloom. I always get one or two heirlooms. Lemon cucumbers, which are fun to take in the lunch for you. Because they look like, they're called lemon cucumbers because they look like a lemon, but they're actually a cucumber. Yeah. They taste just like a cucumber. It's really good. Champion, which is another larger tomato. Patio snacker, I think that's just like a green slicing cuke. This is a uh, burpless, which is a slicing cuke. Burpless? That's what they call them. <laughs> Why is it called that? Because I guess cucumbers make some people burp and this one doesn't. <laughs> sun gold, those oh, are our favorites. These are the favorite. They are like candy. The sun gold are tomatoes. The little, Cherry, little orange orangey tomatoes. yellow ones and they are to die for. This is another sun gold. It's a lemon cucumber. It's another sun gold. <laughs> Can you tell we like the sun golds? It's a better boy and an eggplant. This is a sweet hundred, which is a, just a red kind of cherry tomato. Those are purple bell peppers. Purple? Yep. If there's a, if we haven't done purple before, you can kind of see the picture there. Yep. This is one purple and one orange. These are orange bell peppers. These are gypsy peppers, which are like little bell peppers. Kind of like banana peppers. Yeah. This oh, is these are another bananas. gypsy and one banana. Banana pepper. These are three jalapeno peppers. Ooh boy. And one serrano chili. And we will be making salsa out of those. Yeah, well that's the plan. We're worrying about bugs and little animals, but you also have to worry about her one-year-olds. <laughs> little stinker. Just pulled that right up. I'll see if it recovers. Probably won't. Let's but get back in there. Well, we'll see. We've got broccoli that looks like it's just about ready to harvest there. Oh, it's looking good. Yeah, that one, that head's just about ready. We got a couple of chards. I think this damage was because I sprayed them too hard with the hose. I'm not 100% sure. There was some sort of a kind of a wilt that grew on it and it seems to be over now. But uh, I think it's because I damaged the leaves with the hose. I wanted to explain what the little white pellets are. The little white pellets are slug bait. They're non-toxic, but yeah. we do have lots of slugs, so. We do live in the Pacific Northwest, so slugs are definitely a threat to the garden. Not that they're uh, hard to catch or anything. Yep. <laughs> what we're finding is that an annual, even if it survives the winter, doesn't do very well the next year. So, and it had aphids on it. Yeah, it had aphids. We tried getting ladybugs because they eat aphids, but it just ended up not working because there were just too many they aphids. They all flew away. Yeah, and the ladybugs so, flew away. So we just have to pull them up when they get aphids. We and did have an them. ornamental lupin in the front that had some aphids earlier, and I got neem oil and sprayed Which that is also on there. Non toxic. Yeah, it's non toxic, and it actually did a pretty good job. The problem it's kind of like it, an essential oil, right? Yeah, yeah. it's really got a, a kind of a strong scent to it, and if I was to spray that on chard or kale, you just end up with kale and chard that tastes like neem oil. <laughs> and it has like an insecticidal soap as part of the formulation, so. Yeah, so no. <laughs> yeah. We, we use that on flowers only, but we try to have, we try to keep organic gardening practices so well, we don't I would use spray it on anything. something where I wasn't eating the leaves. Well, yeah, you might, you might <laughs> spray it on the leaves of, you know, maybe a bell pepper or something, like yeah. we're not actually getting it on the part we're gonna eat. Yep. So anyway, we've got some kale that's looking pretty happy there. And this used to be chard, and again, the chard lasted for two years. The problem was the really old chard plants made bitter leaves. So Really I bitter, guess, like they would burn your throat, they yeah, were so bitter. It was, you know, it did good in a, I planted it 
like a year ago and it did good in the spring and then again in the fall and I let it over winter and it survived but it just didn't taste good. Happy looking lettuce there and more lettuce, a variety of kinds. You can see the drip irrigation and Bill has in place here so all so he has to do is just turn on the water at the spigot and it waters everything. And this was spinach everything in the pots. and again it was overwintered and it was kind of looking sad so I just picked the last bit of it, pulled it up so these, these are replanted with arugula and spinach now. All right, and now we're up at our beds here. Got a little fussy one there. Okay, so this is bean plants in the middle, which some of them are kind of coming up a little sporadically, and I didn't use the brand of seed that I usually do, and I'm wondering if that was the cause. And then we have potatoes on the outsides, and around this side we have, again, more beans in the middle, and potatoes on the outside and on this one we have potatoes on the outside and peas in the middle and they're just about ready to start climbing up the uh, lattice there and again more peas in the middle and potatoes in this bed we have several rows of carrots there and some onions and we have a few radishes that are growing in the middle of the onions and one volunteer potato plant. Some of these radishes really need to get picked. They're uh, getting big. There's a size of those radishes. So I'm gonna probably pick the rest of them, even though we got a ton of them already, I'll pick the rest of them tonight. We've got a whole row of various different kinds of squash. Some of these are acorn, some of them are sugar pumpkins, some of them are butternut, some of them are zucchini. I don't remember which are which, we will find out. And we've got the drip irrigation system running and then in front of them we have a row of sort of late planted potatoes that are just starting to come up. And that is it for the garden. And we've got our fruit trees, which we are starting to get little fruits. This one is the honey crisp apples. You can see some little apples starting there. And a lot of these trees, since they were just planted this year, are not producing fruit yet, but that Honeycrisp is. And then our more established trees here definitely, obviously, are. So we got lots of apples going on this guy here. Really excited for that. And this, my friends, is our cherry tree, and this will be our first fruit harvest. And we always get an amazing cherry harvest. There are so many cherries. Look at this. Our trick is going to be not having the birds beat us to them. So Bill is going to try putting some bird netting over this tree this year. Half of them were eaten by the birds, so we're going to attempt attempt to lessen that a little bit. And this one is yellow plums. You can see those getting going too. Is that right? Can you say bye-bye? Yeah! So that's our garden tour for the end of May, early June. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.